Hey, you there. Do you want to make some mountains? Yeah. Well, here you are. Hiya. Today we're going to learn about the Axiom mod. It comes with various different features that allow you to build faster than ever. We're going to go through the different Axiom features one by one. To start off, you'll notice that there's an extra slot on your hotbar. This can be accessed via the scroll wheel or pressing zero by default. Holding Alt on this extra slot will open up an additional set of options. You can scroll through these and select what you want. Let's start with the first one, Extrude. When you have it selected, you'll notice two options on your hotbar, one being Expand and one being Shrink. The general idea of Extrude is that by pointing in the direction you want something to go up or forward, extruding it, you can click and it will go up or down, depending on the button that you press. You can also do this to the sides, and it will always go across the entire face of the object that you're using it on. This is by block as well. The next option is smear. What smear does is it allows you to select two points using your left and right click buttons, and this is the object you'll be smearing. Smearing essentially stretches out the object in a direction of your choosing. You can control this direction with your scroll bar. It can go up, down, and any direction you want it to go. To confirm, you just press right click. If you don't want to confirm and just cancel, press left click. You can also undo any edit you do with any tool by pressing Ctrl Z. After smear comes stack. Stack will allow you to press two points similar to smear, and then you can scroll. Unlike smear, this will not drag across your design, but will simply replicate it along different axes. After stack comes clone. Pretty self-explanatory, you select your area the same way you do with smear and stack, and then you can scroll to move the clone of an object. You can confirm with right click or cancel with left click. Next up is the move tool. By selecting a first point and a second point, just like many of the other tools, you can move a selection. This is very helpful if you've accidentally put something in the wrong spot. Those are the tools that naturally appear in your creative hotbar. But if you go into your original creative hotbar and you hold alt, you'll notice a window come up. Up at the top, you have buttons that will allow you to switch game modes. This is very helpful for testing different things quickly. For example, if I want to be in survival, I can click the survival button and I'll be put into the survival game mode. By pressing Alt, I'll automatically be put back into the creative mode. This works for all the other modes as well. Next thing you'll notice is all these tiles right in the middle. These are saved hotbars, and you can save your hotbars by simply dragging in the blocks you want to be there from your original hotbar. You can also select a hotbar by scrolling to it. This is very helpful for switching types of blocks if you have a large selection. Next, you'll notice something on the right side of the screen. This is your flight speed. At 100%, you'll fly at normal vanilla speed, but above that, you can fly very fast. This is very helpful for getting around large builds. You'll also notice this X in this section back here. You can simply drag blocks from one of your hotbars to the X to delete them from that hotbar. Next up is things on the side. First, there's Tinker. Tinker is essentially a weird, wacky version of the vanilla debug stick. For example, if I select a furnace with my bare fist, it will turn on or off and change its block state. But this also works for things such as planks and other blocks that have stair and slab variants. You can essentially chisel out the shape you want, but it will only chisel out into vanilla shapes, so there's no way to get a vertical slab. Tinker works with many other types of blocks as well, and it's worth messing around with different types of blocks to figure out what it can do. Next up is the No Updates button. Now this is usually used alongside the Force Place button. Force Place allows you to take things such as grass and place them anywhere. But you'll notice that if I try to place one on top of another, the block will update and it will break. Turning on No Updates will allow you to place these however you want, in any shape you want. They'll stay the same even after No Updates and Force Place are turned off but updating the block from that point on will still break it. Next up on the list is replace mode. This is very simple to use. By selecting a block you want to replace another block with, you can replace it by simply holding down the right click button. Another cool thing to note about replace mode is that it also reflects the block states of the block it's being replaced with. So if I turn on replace mode and use a stair block or a slab, it will match the exact state it's in. You can set a keybind for replace mode in your settings. Next up is bulldozer. Bulldozer essentially allows you to hold down left click and break blocks very fast. After that, we have Enchanced Flight. Now this is on by default, I think, and you might have experienced it previously. 
but the general idea is that it allows you to move much more strictly according to the direction you're pressing and the direction you're facing as well. Now that we've covered all the tools in the hotbar, it's time to start with the fun stuff. When pressing right shift by default, you can open up this window. Now this might look pretty complex, and it can be, but it's actually pretty user friendly. We're just going to go over the basic functions of each tool and window in this video and avoid a lot of the super ultra complicated gigachad nerd stuff. Something to note here is that windows can be moved around by simply dragging them to different areas of the screen. This is helpful if you want a customized workspace. First of all, let's get movement out of the way. By holding the left mouse button, you can rotate your camera around by dragging it. This is similar to Google Earth's Street View, and it's pretty easy to maneuver. You can also middle click to grab a block of your choice, we'll talk about this window later, and you can right click to get the crossbar that you're familiar with and fly around using that. You can also scroll to zoom in or out in the direction you're facing, or by holding control and using left mouse button, you can rotate around wherever you're looking at. Holding control and pressing the right mouse button will pan your camera. And that's pretty much the gist of all the movement options here. First up is World Properties. The World Properties panel has a variety of selections to allow you to customize your world, such as making yourself vulnerable, whether you want mobs to spawn, or freezing time and setting the time itself. Next up is the History window. This is one of the greatest features in any Minecraft mod ever, and you cannot change my mind. The History window allows you to undo and redo things that have happened in the session you've played the game in. Not any other session, however. So if you open the game, build something, and then go outside, you can't undo it later. So don't do anything you'd regret and then quit the game. You can go through your history by simply clicking buttons here, or by pressing Ctrl Z, like any other program. Next up is your active block panel. This is the main block you'll use for most of the tools we'll use later. To set your active block, simply click this button, and then search the block you're looking for. For example, if I wanted to build with stone, I spilled coke all over myself, give me a second. For example, if I want to build in stone, I can click this button and search for stone. Then once I see stone, I can click it and my active block is set to that. The next window is the palette window. This is a selection of your recently used blocks in the session, as well as custom palettes that you yourself can make. To make a new palette, you can right click and add a new category. Let's say I want a new palette and I want it to be pink. Now when I click my pink palette, you'll notice my active block was automatically added to it. If I don't want that to automatically appear, I can simply right click and remove the block. You can also right click on a category to add a subcategory, which is child's. So for example, if I had pink and I wanted purple pink, and when I click pink, I'll have another subcategory that I can use to further organize my blocks. From here, I can also press add a new block, and let's say I want to add purple to my purple pink category. And once I click it, it will be there. You can also just drag your active block into the window if you want to add it here. Right in the middle, you'll notice this is just your view. Now you've learned how to move around this main area previously, but you can actually set multiple views. Let's say I wanted to go right here because there's something important here I want. I can click new view and now my main is set to this. And now that new view is set to that spot. So I can go between spots and set multiple views of where I want to go. This is extremely helpful for navigating things. And by pressing right shift, you'll actually go to wherever that view you just selected is. You can name these views by right clicking. Right clicking, you can pin the world and your location, which allows you to just go anywhere in this view. And then when you reselect it, be back at your original spot. Next up is the tools panel. We're gonna go through each of these one by one and they are phenomenal. First up, let's start with Magic Select. You'll notice that the Tool Options panel changes to show a bunch of parameters. These are the different effects that your brush or whatever tool you're using will have. By default, it's set to Block. This means that if I click on my oak planks here and I right click, I will select all the oak planks that are connected to each other. By pressing Delete, I can get rid of them. Now, if you've accidentally selected too much, you can go up to the top and hit Select and Clear. You can also undo your selections if that's faster for you. This will allow you to instantly get rid of your selection. This works for all selection tools, but you can also change this to block state, which means it will select blocks that have the same block state, such as slabs or stairs. Solid will allow you to select any block that you can't pass through that's not connected to something else. So for example, if you made a structure like this cube here, 
and I wanted to select only this cube, by using solid I can do that. But if there were water above this cube, I could select through that as well to select the cube. Any allows you to select the water as well and other non-solid blocks that aren't air. Next up is limit, and this is the limit of blocks you can select. So if I put this to 100, you can notice I can only select a small amount of grass blocks, whereas if this is set to something very high, I can select everything. Range is how far apart different things can be to be selected. For example, if my range is set to 1 and I select a block, and I'm selecting this cube, it's not going to select this other cube next to it. But if I turn up my range, then I can select that cube. And further turning up my range, I can select all three cubes. Surface only means you'll only select blocks that are adjacent to the air. For example, if I have this 3x3 solid cube here and I select surface only, when I click it and I hit delete, it's not going to select those middle blocks right over there. Next up is your selection options down here, and this is the same for all other selection tools. Add means that when I do another selection, it will add it to my current selection, so I can select multiple things. Going to replace means that it will only do the one selection that I'm currently doing and get rid of all other selections. Subtract means that it will unselect something, and intersect will only select the area that overlaps with the current selection. You can see that if I have a selection like this, and I've selected it, and I go to intersect, when I select another selection inside of this that takes up part of that selection that I was previously looking at, it will only select where those two selections well, intersect. The intersect tool is more noticeable in box select, which is our next tool. Box select simply allows you to click and drag a box around where you want to select. You can change this box by scrolling in different directions or by using these little arrows. The squares here will mean it will only change in that axis. Going back to the options of the box tool, you can set the position of where your selection is going to start. And you can also select the size. If I accidentally went over here and I've scrolled up my selection so that it's just barely below and there's a lot of empty space down here, hitting the shrink will make it as small as possible to fit all non-air blocks inside. Next up is freehand select. Freehand select basically allows you to draw a selection. In its options, you can select the shape you'd like to select with, which is sphere, cube, or an octahedron, which is basically just a double-sided pyramid. You can select the radius of your selection here, and you can select just by dragging the area you want to select. Next up is the ruler. The ruler allows you to right-click two different areas, and it will tell you the distance between them, as well as a bunch of different information back here. You can set your points manually from down here as well, and you can add more than one ruler spot if you keep clicking. Next up is the Painter tool. Now, this tool is interesting because it will take your active block and similar to the freehand select tool, you select your shape and when you right click over something, you can change the material. You'll also notice a mask surface button. This means that it will only select the surface of a block. So if I select the ground here and I go back to the menu, it didn't select the dirt below it. But if I hit the non mask surface, it made the same shape underneath. It's important to note that the painter tool will only operate within your selection unless you don't have anything selected. So if I wanted to paint this square right here and I box selected it, and then I go to my painter tool, I can paint inside the square, but nowhere else. Next up is the noise painter. This is similar to the same thing as the painter tool, but it allows you to select multiple blocks and randomize them automatically. Down here, you'll notice the same settings as the Painter tool, except a scale modifier, which basically means that this little fuzzy area down here is going to get more or less zoomed in. This will result in less or more patches of areas. For example, if my scale is set very high and I go down here, which is where you select your blocks, and add a new one, let's say stone and then granite, and then if I right click, you'll notice that there's super large patches of granite and a weird pattern is forming on the ground here. If I turn down my scale, you'll notice that it's going to be much more shrunk down and much more randomized. We're gonna skip the 3D mode button as well as the noise tabs, and we're gonna go all the way down to the blocks tab. Now we mentioned this previously, you can add as many blocks as you possibly could ever want, and you can also set them to different percentages for different common rates. So for example, if I want this my stone to be at 90 and then my other one to be at 90 as well, but I wanted my other one to be at 8, then you'll notice a lot less of the 8 selected block 
If your numbers are less than 100% when added together, you'll actually just get your normal block that was there previously to stay there. Down here is just a preview of your noise, which is basically your randomization pattern thingamajig. Going up to the next tool is the Biome Painter. Now this has the same selection thing as Freehand Select and Painter and what you've seen before. But what this allows you to do is select and paint biomes. Right now I'm in a plains biome, but if I fill in this area here using right click, you'll notice that it will add a little overlay to it. The grass color also changed, and if I press F3, I'll now be in the Badlands biome. To select your biome, you just go to this dropdown and select what you want. You can also tell it to fill vertically, which means that it will go all the way up to height limit, and to visualize the biomes on or off, which means it will tell you where they are. Right now it's pretty easy to see because I have grass, but if you didn't have foliage, it'd be pretty hard to tell without this on. Next up is the contaminator. Down at the bottom, you'll notice the same standard brush tools. Down here is the terrain, and having this on will allow you to place certain sets of blocks. So for example, fertile ocean floor is like this, has a bunch of clay and stuff, whereas grass is just grass, you can't see it here. But gravel ground is gravelly ground with cobblestone and stone and all of the juicy goodness you'd ever want. You can also set it to set decorations or clear decorations. Decorations are things such as grass. So if I wanted grass, and I said no terrain, you could just make it place grass. And you can set the grassiness level and how much grass you want, if you want no grass, a tiny bit of grass, or a bunch of grass. You can also set whether you want to allow tall grass. You can turn either of these on or off. So if you only wanted to place grass, you can do that. Or if you only wanted to place the ground, you can do that as well. Next up is freehand draw. This is basically the painter tool, but in 3D. You can basically select a shape and your radius and you can draw with right click the shape you want. Next up is the Sculpt Draw. This is similar to the freehand draw, but it uses the blocks below hand to create the shape. For example, if I go over my platform here, it's going to use my platform blocks to mold that shape we were just drawing with. This will match whatever is below it, such as the wool or whatever other block you have. You can see there's a radius, not a shape, but there is a strength. You can turn this down to get a smaller sculpting ability or up really high to get crazy spiky things. Invert means that it will go downwards instead of upwards. Denoise will make it smoother. And turning it off will make it less smoother. Mask Y helps to result in more gradual changes, which is nice for shaping the tops of surfaces. Next up is the rock tool. Using your active block, this will create randomized-ish rock patterns. So for example, if I drag here, you'll notice that it's randomizing a bit of the block shape. So I'm rolling over this area in the middle here, but it's not really placing anything. This is nice for creating boulders and whatnot. You can disable the life preview if you want, so if you want it to run slightly smoother and not tell you what block it is. Here's your standard brush settings, and here's your noise radius. Turning this up will mean that the noise is bigger. You can think about this similar to our noise painter earlier. You can see that there's big chunks here, but if I turn it down, there's a lot more of a smaller pattern on the top of these rocks. Next up is noisiness, which will kind of say how separated your blocks are by that noise field. Now it's really easy to see it. If they're not on at all, it's basically just the freehand draw tool. But if you do this and the noise radius up, you can see that you can get some cool randomized block patterns. You can even turn down your radius here to get some nice little boulders all around the area. Smoothing down here will say how smooth your rocks are. For example, if I turn that off, they're very rough. And if I turn it on all the way, they're much more smooth. Meld strength is related to the smoothing and basically says how much they connect to the ground and each other. This also has a reset to default button in case you mess up your settings a lot. Next up is the weld tool, which essentially welds two surfaces together. And this is very helpful for getting a bit more of a smooth transition between different surfaces. You can change the smoothing strength and how smooth you want it to be. If it's crazy smooth, then you'll notice a bit of a delay when you're moving your mouse, but it will be crazy smooth. And this threshold will decide how hard it is for the tool to affect a certain area. Next up is the melt tool, which essentially is the same thing as the weld tool, but backwards. You can delete an area using different types of brushes and it will smooth it out and it has the same settings as the weld tool. Next up is the text tool, which means you can type your text, for example, place it by just clicking with right click. After that, we have the elevation tool. This will raise or lower surfaces. 
you can choose the radius here and the height. The sharpness tool is a bit more complicated, but it basically makes the edges sharper or more flat. There's two buttons down here, which means either we're raising or you're lowering. After that, there's flatten, which is very similar to the other tool, but it just flattens out areas. It has the same brush settings and the sharpness does pretty much the exact same thing. You can also lock the Y, which essentially means that it will only affect up to the Y level that you've selected previously. Next up is the slope tool, which means you can right click the spot where you want your slope to start and then where you want it to end, you hold down the button and draw a pathway of how you wanna get there. This is super helpful for making things like bridges. You can either do slopes in planes, which means that if I select here and drag it, you'll notice that it goes from that entire forever beyond words in a straight line. There's also cone, which selects in a more circular curved area. The sharpness here does the same thing that elevation and flatten does. Next up is the smooth tool. This also has a live preview button and your standard brush settings, as well as a smoothing strength option. When you go over with this tool, it will smooth out the area it goes over. It's hard to see here because this is fairly smooth already, but if I turn up the strength to something like 10, you can see that it will try to smooth out this area like crazy and make it a bit more rounded. You can change this value here to choose how smooth you want something to be. And this little percentage mark is basically the number of blocks that will be preserved. If this is at 100%, then all the blocks will be kept, although just moved around. If it's at 200%, it will add double the blocks. And if it's at something like 25, it will take away 75% of the blocks. That's only in stable mode, however. The melt mode will do the same thing, but this percentage will affect it now, and the grow mode will do the same thing, and the percentage will just affect it now. This allows for some fine tuning. The fix edges button around here is an advanced setting, but it basically just prevents jagged edges from popping up. There's also a reset button in case you mess this one up. Next up is distort, and it will distorts. You can right click on something and it will mess it up for you. You can change the scale, which is essentially the same thing as our noise settings in our noise painter. The distance, which is similar to that as well. You can change the iterations. There are a bunch of complicated settings here, but basically messing around with them will give you different results and different types of distortion. There's also smooth edges here, which will basically avoid jagged edges. Next up is the roughen tool, which is designed to create those jagged edges. You can see here that when I use it, it kind of looks like something exploded. And all these settings down here are similar to the sort tool and situation where you kind of just mess around with them until you get what you want. Less ratio typically means less roughening and more ratio typically means more roughening. This minimum faces thing is a bit more complicated so we'll skip that for now. And these add and remove things will decide whether you're adding or removing blocks or doing both. Next up is the shatter tool. Now this is a super unique tool, but the general idea is it uses the noise we're familiar with, so kind of a randomized textury thing. And by changing that, you can break an area. You can see by using it, it will kind of shatter the ground. This is easy to see on a flat surface. You can change your brush settings like standard. Below that is the shatter settings itself, like the scale, so how far apart the cracks are by default. At a higher, it will look more like this, and at a lower, it could look something more like this. Then there's width, which is how big those cracks are wide-wise. So for example, if I have a pretty high scale, you notice these are a bit thinner, but if I turn that up, they're much larger cracks. You can also use your active block to fill in where that air usually goes. This is cool for texturing ground. We'll skip all this noise stuff for now because it's pretty complicated, and then we'll move on to the extrude. This works the exact same way that our extrude in our hotbar works, in the idea that you can expand or shrink based on these buttons here. There's a displace button here, which basically means that if it's one wide, it will just move them instead of extending them. You also have your settings here, which how many blocks you're gonna extrude at once, as well as what type of thing you're extruding. Up next, we're gonna go through this top bar over here. Starting off the edit tab, you can simply undo, redo, cut, or copy your objects, as well as save blueprints, which we'll go over in a second. In selection, there's a bunch of different options for changing your selection, such as shrinking or expanding. In the view tab, you can get a new view, which is just another way of pressing this plus button right here. And you can also show the biomes, or show the key presses, or show your selections. In the Create tab, you can make different shapes. If I wanted to make a cube, I could press the button, and you'll notice this Create Shape window comes up. And I can say what width and size I want my cube to be. If I want my cube not to be a complete even cube, then I can change the individual widths here and say if it's hollow or not. 
and then I can either copy it to my clipboard, which means I can paste it later. We'll go over that again in a second. And I can change the rotation here as well. But if I hit place, you'll notice it pops up here and I can right click to place it. But before it's officially placed, I can move it around and rotate it even diagonally, which is nuts. And you can place it by pressing enter. This works for a bunch of different types of shapes as well, each one with their own settings. In operations, you can do things automatically. You can drain water, set the biome, you can even fill a bunch of weird ways, like just the top part of a selection. You can also simulate gravity, and it will make your things fall from your selection. Or you can analyze, which essentially will give you a rundown of what the heck your selection has. There's tool masks, which we'll skip for now, because that's a bit more of a complicated thing. And then there's window. Now this is where you can open up different windows on the side, which is super helpful. So if you're missing a window, you can click here. And you can change your keybinds from this help tab. Let's say that I really like this cube I've just selected and I want to use it over and over and over and over and over again. I can copy it by pressing Ctrl C and I can paste it anywhere by pressing Ctrl V. This is where this tab on the top right comes in and it will give you a bunch of options for when you're pasting things. For example, if I wanted to keep existing blocks where they are, so where this intersects with the grass, and I want this to be grass still, I can press keep existing. But if it's off, the grass below this corner will still be rock. You can also choose whether to paste the air that was nearby it, which essentially will empty out that area. Let's say I really want this to be always available to my clipboard for pasting. Then I can, with it selected and copied, go to edit, save blueprint, and I can name it, so let's say, diagonal rock. I can say who made it. I'm Redlium5, so I'll put my name there. And I can add different tags. Now this will make it easier to search for in the Blueprint browser, which is basically a collection of clipboard stuff that you've copied and want to paste all the time. So if I add a tag, they have some default ones here, and you can make a new one just by typing and clicking. Let's see if they have rock. So it's a rock, and that will make it easy to search for. And it's also very large. You can add as much as you want, and you can choose the angle of the thumbnail image, which will let you find it easier. And then I'll hit save. It will open up in a different window, and you'll be able to select where you want it to be saved. I just use the default folder. Now that that's done, you'll notice our rock is gone. But if I go to Windows, Blueprint Browser, or just by clicking this button here, I can open this browser with all of my other selections. So I love this diagonal rock, so if I click it, it will automatically be put into my clipboard and I can paste it wherever my cursor is just by pressing Ctrl V twice or Ctrl V and enter and whatever else I want until I get as many as I want. You can also paste and rotate just like normal and it basically is just a straight up copy. This is super helpful if you have things like trees and you want to paste a lot of trees around because trees are a pain in the butt to build all the time and it would be easier just to make a few variants and paste those all around. And that's the gist of Axiom. It's super amazing for building things, especially landscapes, and is super helpful just when building anything in general. You can create roads using the texture painting stuff, and it's just ridiculous the amount of things you can do in a short time. I was able to quickly put together this little tiny scene here by just pasting around a bunch of different things and just building, and it probably took me about 10 times less than what it would have taken before. I know it's a bit of a different type of video today, but I really wanted to show off this cool tool. So I'll see you later and...